Hello everyone and welcome to this week's OpenGL water tutorial and this week we're going to be making the water look like it's rippling by using something called a DUDV map. So the way that we're going to be making our water all ripply is by distorting the reflection and refraction textures and to distort a texture we can just add an offset to the texture coordinates that are used to sample it. So for example, and you don't need to copy this into your code, I'm just going to delete it in a second, but I can distort the reflection texture by adding an offset to the reflection texture coordinates like this, and when I run this you can see that it has shifted the reflection to the right. I could also do the same thing and shift the reflection to the left like this, but this just adds a constant distortion over the whole water quad. To make this look realistic, the distortion needs to be different at different points on the water's surface, so we need this distortion value here to be different for different places on the quad. And this is where the DUDV map comes in. A DUDV map is just a simple texture with a lot of red and green wobbles on it like this, and you're going to need to have one in your res folder for this tutorial, so you can either download one from the description or you can find your own online. The one that I'm using for this tutorial isn't actually the best because it doesn't quite tile properly, but I'll find a better one for you in one of the future tutorials. So a DUDV map is going to represent the distortion at different points on the water's surface. The texture is obviously full of lots of red and green colours, and these red and green values are all 2D vectors, which we can use as the offsets to add to the reflection and refraction texture coordinates. So we're going to map the DUDV texture to the water quad and then we'll sample it for every point on the water's surface to get the distortion for that point. However, the red and green values are always going to be positive in the DUDV texture, you obviously can't have a negative colour, so our distortions would always be positive. We want to be able to have both positive and negative distortions for this to look realistic, so we need to convert these red and green values of the DUDV map a bit before we can use them. This is going to be very easy to do, currently the colour values are all between 0 and 1, so to convert them to be between minus 1 and 1, we simply multiply by 2 and subtract 1. And we'll be doing this conversion in the fragment shader in a minute. So let's jump right into the code and we're going to start off in the water fragment shader and because the DUDV map is just a texture we're going to need a sampler 2D so that we can sample it and get those distortion values. Then in the water shader class we need to do the usual thing so let's create an int which is going to hold the location of that uniform variable. Let's get the location of that uniform variable like we always do and let's spell DUDV map correctly. And then we're going to connect the texture unit, we're going to indicate that we're going to be sampling the DUDV map uh, from texture unit 2, and we have to remember that that's where we need to bind the DUDV map. So in the water renderer class now, we need to um, load up the DUDV map, so I'm going to create a constant string up at the top here which is going to be the name of my DUDV map, and that, well I called it uh, water DUDV, um, so put there whatever you called your DUDV texture file, and then we need an int which is going to hold the ID of the DUDV map texture. Then we're going to load it up in the water renderer constructor using the loader.load texture method, so that loads up our DUDV map, and then in the prepare render method we need to bind it, and as I mentioned just a second ago, we need to bind it to uh, texture unit 2, and what are we binding? We're binding the DUDV texture. So now we're going to go into the water vertex shader, and I actually messed up a little bit last week because I deleted the output texture coordinates that we were outputting from the vertex shader, but we actually need them this week, so put them back in, put back in that calculation which we had last week, which you can find in the description if you want. And I'm actually also going to tile these texture coordinates a bit, like we did with the terrain textures. Um, so I'm going to set a tiling value and then I'm going to multiply the texture coordinates by that to tile those, uh, to tile the texture, the DUDV map. Um, so now in the water fragment shader we're going to take in those texture coordinates, which are just simple texture coordinates for that quad. And we are now going to sample that DUDV map to get the distortion, which we're going to call distortion 1 for now. So we're going to sample the DUDV map, 
and we're going to sample it at those texture coordinates but I'm gonna write it like this uh, for now and you'll see why in a bit and we also only care about the red and green values because that's where the distortion is stored and we have to do that uh, conversion as I mentioned in the explanation earlier so now that we've got the distortion we can use this to distort the refraction and reflection texture coordinates and we can do that simply by adding the distortion onto those texture coordinates so let's do that for the refraction and for the reflection texture coordinates and then if we go ahead and run that uh, something should have happened as you can see we've got a lot of distortion now but it's perhaps a bit too much distortion so back in the fragment shader we're going to want to change the strength of the distortion and I'm going to create a constant here which is going to indicate how strong that distortion should be and I'm going to set that to 0.02 but you can set it to whatever you want then I'm just gonna put brackets around this whole bit here and I'm going to multiply it by the wave strength which should hopefully make the distortion a little bit less and if I run that you can see that that has indeed worked and that this, the distortion is now a lot more pleasant however there is now another problem and that is the wobbly glitch right down at the bottom of the screen there if you remember from last week because of projective texturing the reflection and refraction texture coordinates at the bottom of the screen are going to have a y value of almost zero and because the distortion adds an offset to the texture coordinates they're sometimes going to go below zero this causes the textures to go off the bottom of the texture and then wrap back round to the top of the texture because of the way that OpenGL tiles them and this causes that nasty glitch so to fix this problem we're going to clamp the texture coordinates to make sure that they never go too high or too low so we're going to use the clamp function we're going to clamp the refraction texture coordinates and we're going to clamp them between 0.001 and 0.999 we're going to do the same for the reflection texture coordinates but we have to do uh, each component separately here so first for the x component we can clamp it so we clamp the x component between again 0.001 and 0.999 but for the y coordinate um, we actually flipped this for the reflection texture coordinates in the last episode so the clamping is also flipped so we clamp between minus 0.999 and minus 0.001 so that should now have clamped the texture coordinate so if we run that you can see that we no longer have that problem at the bottom of the screen however the water still looks very static the distortion is completely static it's not moving at all and that's very unrealistic because in real water the ripples would be moving over the surface so we need to make these ripples move so the way that we're going to get the water to look like it's moving is we're going to have an offset for where we sample the DUDV map and that offset is going to be called move factor and we're going to change this offset over time uh, which will make the water look like it's moving so in the water shader we need to do the usual thing for that new uniform variable that we just created the move factor uniform variable so we need to get the location of it and remember to spell it correctly and of course we need a method which will allow us to load up a float to that move factor uniform variable allowing us to change the offset over time which will therefore allow us to move where we sample the DUDV map over time which will make the water look like the distortion is moving so in the water renderer uh, we need to change this move factor and we're going to move it at a certain speed and that speed I'm going to define here so I'm going to define the wave speed as 0.03 you can use whatever value you want there uh, just play around with it until you get something you like and I'm going to create the move factor variable here which I'm going to initialize as 0 then in the prepare render method every single frame we're going to increase the move factor by the speed by the wave speed and the speed is a speed per second uh, is a distance per second so we have to multiply that by the number of seconds that have passed uh, which we can get by doing display manager dot get frame time seconds and then we want to make the move factor loop back to zero when it gets to one which we've done by doing that and then we're going to load up the move factor to the shader by doing shader dot load move factor and then in the fragment shader we now have this move factor value changing over time so we can use it to add an offset to the x texture coordinate for where we sample the DUDV map 
and that will make the distortion move in the x direction over time and if you have a look at the trees in the reflection there you can see that the distortion is indeed moving but the distortion itself isn't actually changing it's just moving over the surface so we can make this even more realistic um, by actually sampling the DUDV map again and having another distortion move in a different direction so let's copy this whole line and let's sample the texture again, the DUDV map again. This will be distortion 2, and for this we'll just change a few things. So let's uh, flip the X texture coordinate by making it negative, and let's also make this distortion move in the Y direction as well, just to be a bit different from the first one. And now we're going to add those two distortions together to create that final total distortion, which will look a, a lot more realistic. So total distortion equals distortion 1 plus distortion 2 and then we need to use that here and here so let's run that and hopefully we should now have some pretty realistic looking uh, distortion and as you can see that is now the case uh, so it's looking pretty nice now the distortion is changing nicely over time and you can mess around with those variables as much as you want to get whatever kind of effect you're aiming for but one thing that I like to do is I like to add a bit of a blue tint to the colour of the water. So I'm just going to add another line at the end of the water fragment shader and I'm going to mix that final colour that we've calculated and I'm going to mix it with a bluish colour, bluey green. Um, so I'm going to use the mix function and I'm going to mix it with this blue colour and I'm just going to add 0.2 of that blue colour. So not very much, just a very slight tinge to the water and there you go you can see it looks a little bit more blue so that is going to be it for this week don't forget to check out the foxes and the butterflies in yesterday's devlog video a link to that is on the screen now and do keep in touch with me via any of my social media pages all of the links are in the description below but yeah thank you guys very much for watching this video do subscribe if you haven't already have a fantastic week and i will see you all next time.